All right, so uh, last time we left off then with um, looking at my birth chart, which is a snapshot. Birth chart is basically a snapshot uh, of, of the sky when you were born, uh, but it's also a snapshot of your karma. So we'll get to that in another video. In this video, what I want to do then is look at the second most important uh, component of astrology, and this is the part where uh, it really proves that it works. Um, you have to know how to read transits. And for that, uh, traditionally we had ephemerides, which record, uh, which are records which record where the planets are at, at any given point in relation to the ecliptic, the zodiac. Uh, now you can pretty much do all this online with computers to keep track of. There are uh, sites such as AstroSeek, where you can plug in your chart and then uh, ask it what your transits are. So we'll look here at this chart, which are my transits for today. Um, but the planets move at different speeds, as we have seen. So uh, some of these are very, very long transits. Um, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, uh, so now this is a snapshot. As you can tell, it's quite considerably more complex. Um, let's see, let's bring it up. And on this outer ring right here, this is the only thing that's different from what we were just looking at is this outer ring, which is where the planets are at right now, today, June 8th, 2021. And as you can see, they're, they're going in a counterclockwise direction, uh, which is called secondary motion. The primary motion is the optical illusion uh, that the sun rises out of the east and sets in the west, which we know it does not. Um, and um, so here they are. So uh, let's see what I've got here. Uh, my birthday is on June 26th. So here's the sun creeping up on my sun. My sun is four degrees cancer. And right now, uh, the sun is, it doesn't give the degree where it's at, but it's, it's, it's in Gemini right now. In a few weeks, it'll be right down here, conjunct my sun. Uh, solar returns are always good. And uh, it will also, in the process, cross over my Mercury. It'll, uh, here, here's my Mercury. It's just about conjunct with my Mercury right now. And uh, Mercury itself is actually conjunct my Mercury good period for ideas and uh, intellectual things going on here. Um, Mercury moves very fast. Its transits are very rapid. They don't last long. Um, and here's Venus uh, that is crossing over my Mars. Oh, good for a love life right now and, and meeting uh, new women. So, hmm, we'll see what the outcome is of that. Uh, so going down here and then we have Mars. Uh, Mars has just gone through my stellium uh, and it's right now in relation to my moon. Uh, writers do, I should mention, often have the moon on their ascendants. Um, there's a guy named Michel Gokulin who did an experiment. Uh, since these four angles are the most important parts, he did an experiment where um, he looked at for writers the position of the moon and did a statistical calculation. Uh, and then, so the moon for writers and uh, Jupiter for actress, actors and politicians, Mars for athletes, um, those were the three main ones. And he did indeed find those, uh, those planets tended to be angular beyond the bounds of simple statistical prob probability. Um, so interesting, a lot of writers do have uh, the moon angular. Um, and then so what do we have here? My part of fortune is moving right now. Um, the nodes are moving. And then this monster right here, Pluto. Now, I have had quite a few years of bad luck, as everyone knows, probably back since 2013. And that is because of this guy here. Pluto has moved in opposition to my stellium. Uh, it started back in 2013. Uh, it went over my Mars. It went over my Sun in opposition. It went over my Venus, and it went over my Moon. Uh, this was all the ending of my marriage. Uh, and the legal battles regarding my son. Um, and as this, though that were not bad enough, that lasted for about four years, five years, something like that, because Pluto moves so agonizingly slowly that now it is squaring my Saturn, uh, which is another awful transit. Uh, we actually, in the mundane world, for the past two years, have had uh, a Pluto-Saturn transit. I think it may be Pluto conjunct Saturn, but I forget. Uh, which correlates with war cycles. Pluto and Saturn, when you get those two together, it correlates with war cycles. Um, and Pluto and Saturn really do 
mess up your life. It's about a three-year transit. I'm still under it. it mine lasts until February. Um, uh, it's one of the worst transits you can get. These, these are just two absolutely malefic planets, uh, and they will turn your life upside down. There is no mistake about it. And I've checked on this. A lot of people commit suicide under uh, Pluto-Saturn aspects. My grandfather, the rocket scientist, a scientist, shot himself through the head under a Pluto uh, Saturn transit, as did my girlfriend, who also shot herself through the head as Pluto was transiting in conjunction with her Saturn. Terrible, terrible transit. Um, I've just now Saturn uh, returns every 28 years, and at the age of 28, uh, it lasts for about a year, maybe two at the most. You're never the same after your your Saturn return as you were before. It's it's a maturation process, but now Saturn every seven years squares itself. My Saturn is over here. So in seven years, it's going to be over here. At the age of seven, my parents divorced. Seven years later, you're going to be 14. 14 is notoriously one of the most difficult years. Uh, puberty, alienation, uh, suddenly the world is no longer self-evident. People seem strange, different, and weird. Clicks form, you know, the trauma of high school, basically. And then at 21, seven years later, uh, you get the maturation of the mind and the intellect, which comes in, and so forth, every seven years. Uh, there's a crisis that is inflicted on you by Saturn. Saturn is a, is a tough motherfucking planet. Not as, not as bad, I think, as Pluto, because at least Saturn has discipline and structure. Let's say if you get uh, a person on his chart with Saturn conjunct Mars, that'd be somebody good at architecture or engineering. That's the builder archetype. Let's say if you get uh, Mars conjunct Neptune, you might get an Olympic athlete swimmer. That's the swimmer archetype, since Mars is always associated with either soldiers or athletics. Um, and then so what else? We have Jupiter over here. Uh, opposing my Jupiter. Oh, some good luck. Look at this. Uh, Jupiter, 180 degrees. <clears throat> my native, natal Jupiter. Uh, I should be having some good luck. Uh, my luck has been improving a bit lately. So even though you get severe transits that last for three years, like a Pluto-Saturn transit, there's still other stuff going on. So it can't ever all be bad because the other planets are also doing their stuff. Um, and then, uh, my, let's see, my Neptune is up here. Uh, I'm not sure what it's doing. Doesn't look like it's in range of anything that I can see. And then Chiron returns every 49 years. And Chiron, by the way, is definitely associated with healers and surgeons. In my most recent past life, I was a surgeon uh, who operated in a, a MASH unit in World War II. And we'll look at his chart so you can see the placement of Chiron. Uh, but it is exactly conjunct uh, Mercury. Mercury is, would be intelligence regarding healing. Uh, and it is in Capricorn, in his case, which is associated with the government, and he was a military man, uh, so that all lines right up. Um, and um, I went to an astrology meetup group where, uh, because I was up to that point completely skeptical about any asteroids or anything like that, because once you let one asteroid in, then how many more do we have to let in to swamp the system? It's already complex enough as it is anyway. Uh, but we went through chart after chart, the founder of the Red Cross, uh, Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, uh, the founder of modern surgery. We looked at the position of Chiron, and Chiron in every case was angular. It was at one of these four angles, usually either the ascendant or the midheaven. Which of the four are the two most important? Uh, so in my case, I suppose helping people understand metaphysics is a form of healing, I suppose, in my case. Um, so, and then there's, uh, let's see, and then Uranus, uh, what is it doing? Uh, let's see, anything in range over here. Uranus is almost opposite my Neptune. Looks like it's a little off. I think it has already gone in op opposition to my Neptune. Neptune is spirituality, Uranus is breakthroughs. So that'd be uh, spiritual breakthroughs, perhaps. Um, Rudolf Steiner, we'll look at his chart has Neptune conjunct Mercury, which would be intelligence regarding spirituality. Perfect. Um, I was, uh, in my past life, I was a Civil War general, and I noticed that he had uh, Mercury conjunct Mars, which, in other words, is intelligence about war. Um, and most soldiers do have Mars aspected. Um, you're not going to get a soldier without Mars uh, aspected in some fundamental way. Uh, let's see, the moon's zipping along here. Oh, it's gone over my... my my Lilith, 
the dark bitch. <laughs> I don't know exactly how that applies to a man's psyche. Oh, and look, Lilith itself is, is returning o over it. Uh, and that's just the moon's apogee. Who knows whether there's anything to that? I, I mean, who knows? Um, and so Mercury uh, is about to go... Let's see, it's over my Mercury and it's about to go over my Mars, which might be thoughts about war at some point. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll write an essay about war uh, coming up soon, although that's not really on my mind. Um, so Mercury, Mercury is going to light all these up. Ding, 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 ding. So, um, and I already am planning a brand new book, uh, a big one. So this is going to be a fruitful summer for ideas as Mercury uh, lights all this up uh, for me during the summer. And so uh, that's astrology in a nutshell. Those are the two most important things to understand is how to read a natal chart and then the transits uh, because you can make predictions with transits. Um, you can also correlate them with past traumas. For instance, let's say when I had to go into the hospital when I was in my early 20s, 2021, for an appendectomy, um, that's Saturn and Mars pretty much. Saturn carries a pair of scissors with him wherever he goes. He has a scythe. And I had, um, if I can remember, let's see, I had Saturn at that time going here across my natal Mars, the body, and the knife of the surgeon. And then I had um, Mars at the same time going over my natal Saturn over here. A pair of scissors, in other words. Uh, so this stuff works. Um, there's no two ways around it. If you know how to read the language and you know what you're doing, um, it's definite, it's real. So uh, we'll leave that there for this time. And I think what we'll do next time is start looking at re reincarnation uh, and start looking at these charts in light of reincarnation. We, we might, let's see, we might also want to cover synastry which is where you can take a chart and combine it with, a, uh, let's say, uh, your girlfriend's chart uh, or somebody who might be a potential romantic uh, or a husband and wife. And then you can see which of these things are conjunct with each other. Uh, very often, as Young did a special study on married couples checking for conjunctions, let's say, of the sun. Let's say my sun is four degrees cancer. Uh, and then I marry someone whose moon is three or four degrees cancer. Not a coincidence. Or Mars um, and Venus, same thing. Uh, I had a girlfriend who, with whom my Mars was 180 degrees opposite her Venus. That is very intense sexual attraction. So there's synastry too that we'll need to go over. So uh, there's, there's a lot. We'll also need to look at planetary pictures uh, and midpoints and um, some other stuff. So we'll leave it there with this basic introduction to astrology.